Tearing apart my Raptors, even with the Steph stopper Fred Van Vliet keeping Curry in check, Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins combined for a blistering 65 points, and Otto Porter Jr. added 15 off the bench. This video shows you the facet to the Golden State Warriors' offensive attack that's too powerful for their opponents. Before that, only 21.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so help the channel reach 50k by subscribing if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Even with Steph shooting 2 for 10 from the field, on a night where the undrafted product of Wichita State Fred Van Vliet and Nick Nurse's trap-heavy game planning shut the chef down, Steph and Dre combined for 16 assists, each putting up 8 in the 15-point win against Toronto. While Curry couldn't get it done individually, the Warriors proved that even when their best players get game planned for, they have plenty of big-time contributors who can get it done. What fueled the Warriors to a win against the feisty young Raptors, led by Van Vliet, Siakam, and the Rookie of the Year frontrunner Scotty Barnes, was the production of two players who've developed into elite shot creators throughout their young NBA careers. It's taken them a different length of time to progress into the caliber of players they are right now, but both the number one pick from 2014 and the number 28 pick from 2018's draft have steadily morphed into elite offensive weapons. Given I'm Canadian living in one of Toronto's six boroughs, combined with the fact that Steph sung the anthem last night, we're going to lead off with Air Canada. A Wiggins, not the lyric from that Drake song seven years ago, but the starting small forward for the Golden State Warriors, made a strong statement against his hometown team last night. Maple Jordan delivered one of his best games in a Warrior uniform. Golden State's winning system and the legendary shooters on the roster have definitely had an impact on Andrew's development as a shooter and overall score. Wiggs went off for 32 points on 12 for 20 from the fields and 6 for 8 from the three-point line, his most productive night from beyond the arc this season. His 32 points marked his second 30-point game in 2021-22. With how tight Andrew's handle is looking and how smooth he's transitioning into jumpers off the dribble, we're all getting to witness why he was selected first overall in an NBA draft. Andrew's guard skills for his 6'8 height are pristine. Wiggins was expected to be one of our game's top superstars, and while he hasn't come close to living up to expectations for the organization that he first played with, basketball fans in Minneapolis can at least take solace in the fact that their old player is thriving on the potential 2022 champs. Wiggins usually has his best games against the two teams who traded him away, the Cavaliers and Timberwolves, but his third highest scoring average comes against the team he grew up watching. Versus Toronto in 14 career outings, Wiggins is posting 22 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists per game on 48% shooting from the field. It's almost like playing the Raptors makes Maple Jordan play like regular Jordan. Over his past 5 games, Wiggins is averaging 23.6 points on 56% shooting and 44% shooting from the three-point line, looking more and more comfortable each game in the Warriors' offense as the second-slash-third scoring option next to Stephen Curry and Jordan Poole. Andrew's even earning the respect of Stephen A. Smith. Andrew Wiggins is balling. Let's give him some love. Once upon a time, I'd give him away for a box of cookies. I no longer feel that way. He's corrected that, and he's been balling. I made this video on Jordan Poole after he dropped 22 in the first half, scoring 32 in total, without Steph Curry and Draymond, carrying the dubs to a victory over the Detroit Pistons. In the next game, Poole came out and absolutely killed my Raptors by dropping 33 points on 10 for 13 shooting from the fields and 8 of 11 shooting from deep. His 8 threes were a career high, topping what Jordan did half a month ago against the Charlotte Hornets as the 22-year-olds had 7 triples in that game. Poole's added an at times elite 3 point stroke to his already multifaceted offensive repertoire, which already included a nice blend of playmaking and slashing. Further exemplifying Poole's dominance in last night's outing against Toronto, only one other player in Warriors franchise history has ever scored 33 points on 13 shots or fewer, and that's the two-time finals MVP Kevin Durant. 
Steph's been posting MVP numbers, but he's still very content to space out the floor for Wiggins and Poole, allowing those two to benefit off the extra space. As we saw from Nick Nurse last night, opposing coaches are going to expend all of their mental energy and game planning on shutting down the current MVP favorite. My team's point guard Fred Van Vliet, ever since the 2019 finals, has always known the first rule when defending Curry is to stay attached to him at all times, at all costs. Van Vliet and the Raptors trapping significantly bothered Curry. Steph dropped eight dimes and he played solid defense, but from a scoring standpoint, Curry had one of his least productive and least efficient games of the season, something that was predictable against a Nick Nurse coached squad. Curry finished with 12 points on 10 shots, which included one of four on twos and one of six on threes. There isn't much Curry can do to establish an offensive rhythm when he faces extreme coverages like this. However, unlike seasons prior to this one where Steph's scoring had to carry or it was going to be a rough night, Golden State still managed to take down the Raptors by 15 points, a lead that was once as high as 21, and in a game the Raptors never once led. Despite the off night, the Dubs outscored the Raptors by 19 during Curry's 37 minutes on the floor. This demonstrated two factors that are making Golden State a different animal to beat this year. Firstly, it showed Curry's willingness to use himself as a decoy for his other teammates. And secondly, it displayed that Golden State has significantly better suited personnel this year around Curry. Toronto's strategy was to try and make him almost invisible when he was out there on the court. The Raptors' end goal, as it always is in their matchups with Golden State, is to force Steph's teammates to create their own offense. That game plan worked without Kevin Durant and eventually Clay two years ago in the finals. Nurse's brilliant box and ones gave Curry plenty of trouble, while the next two seasons saw the Warriors roster continue to lack the proper firepower to punish a Curry-centric defensive game plan. But this season has been a complete turnaround, and one possession that was exemplary of the Warriors' improved supporting cast this season came during the fourth quarter. With the Raptors cutting their deficit to 10, Nurse went to his patented box and one, with Van Vliet face guarding Curry and the other four Raptors in a zone. But Jordan Poole reminded Nurse and the Raptors that he's no Quinn Cook. A box and one just isn't effective when you've got Poole running around trying to get an open look. When Poole finds his offensive flow, you can see all the facets to his game which make him the ideal fit next to Curry in the backcourt. Jordan pretty much replicates Curry's value as an offensive presence. Jordan rarely stays still without the ball in his hands, knowing that as he gets hotter and hotter, he himself is garnering attention from defenses. Over their last five games, the Warriors' offensive big three of Steph Curry, Andrew Wiggins, and Jordan Poole is combining for 74.8 points, and each of them are shooting at least 50% from the fields and 39% from three-point range. After that big three, you only need a few role players chipping in three to five field goals and your team's at around 110 points. Draymond, Damian Lee, Chris Chioza, Gary Payton, Otto, Iggy, Nemanja, and Huminga are more than capable of supporting the big three. But in merely a few weeks, the Warriors are adding a five-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA player, three-time champ, and the NBA's all-time leader in single-game three-pointers into their lineup. No matter how much he bounces back from two major surgeries, Clay Thompson brings a new level of danger to this Warriors team. Draymond's on pace for another Defensive Player of the Year winning season. I can make a separate video on Dre, but in your opinion, what's the scariest part about the 2021-22 Warriors? Best answer gets next video shout out. Today's Community Speaks winner is Was X Zacher who says, I think the Heat or the Bulls will come out of the East assuming Kyrie isn't playing for the Nets. They're just so good with their new additions, so I think they make it to the finals assuming no one gets injured. The top three commenters with the most shoutouts by the 25th of December are going to receive NBA merchandise in the holiday season, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. This was DeFlo, and I'll see you next video.